Yo, what is up YouTube, Lee the Captain here, and I believe that Polkadot's native token called DOT is crazy. And why do I say that? Because I believe that DOT during the next bull run could hypothetically at least go to the price of $100. And even though that's not financial advice, and even though that's not a guarantee, here are several reasons why I believe that could very well happen. And one of the major reasons why I think that could happen, I think is going to boil down to Polkadot's rock solid, that's what she said, fundamentals. You know, the goal of Polkadot is to connect blockchains together. Quite essentially, they are focused on interoperability. And just to put into perspective as to what I mean by this, you know, as of right now, there's a lot of networks out there, a lot of blockchains, but for the most part, they are independent of one another. And as a result of this, they are not freely able to send value and data to each other. And just an example of this would be Bitcoin and Ethereum, two independent networks, they are not able to freely send data and value to each other. But there is a solution for this. And this is where the amazing Polkadot steps in because through Polkadot, this issue right here is quite essentially gone. You know, again, right? They are aiming to connect blockchains together. They are focused on interoperability. And now when I say this, some of the Polkadot ding-dongs or should I say critics, they like to say, oh, there is no future in the interoperability market. Who even bothers with that? But here's the thing. I think there's a lot of future potential in that because if we take a look at this, the global blockchain interoperability market is anticipated to more than triple in size over the next five years. So yeah, that's essentially pie in the face for those polka dot critics because these numbers show that the interoperability market still has a lot of potential. However, it doesn't end there because polka dot has one of the best staking ratios out there. As a matter of fact, it currently has a higher staking ratio than Phantom, Near, and even Polygon as well. And now, this is taking nothing from these other blockchains that I just mentioned, but the fact that Polkadot has a higher staking ratio than these amazing projects, I think truly speaks volumes. Polkadot, in my opinion, it's fantastic. And now, here's the thing. As of August, Polkadot and its canary network called Kusama was ranked number one in the world in terms of crypto development activity beating out giants, that's what she said, such as Chainlink, Cardano, Hedera, and many others. So there is clearly still a lot of activity going on on Polkadot. People still have great conviction for its future, and a lot of people, they're still developing on it. And personally speaking, I think that a major catalyst, which could very well allow Polkadot's native token called DOT to hypothetically attain the price of $100 during the next bull run, is the fact that I do think that the next bull run could be so legendary. And why do I say this? Because when compared to the 2021 bull run, you know, even despite the 2021 bull run being that insane, at that time, there was actually over 100 million less crypto owners than today. So just let that sink in, right? The 2021 bull run looked that crazy with over 100 million less crypto owners than what we have right now. So you got to imagine what the next bull run will look like, especially now that we insert over 100 million new crypto owners. I mean, man, when there's this many people owning cryptos, I think that during the next bull run, the FOMO, buying pressure, buying volume, and as well as the altcoin season, I think all of that could be so ridiculous. And I think that when altcoins start rallying during the next bull run, I think so will amazing cryptocurrencies, much like DOT. I think that DOT during the next bull run could very well have such an insane rally. And when I take all of those positive factors into consideration, and when I consider the use case and A plus fundamentals of Polkadot, I really don't see why DOT during the next bull run won't hypothetically at least go to the price of $100. At least that's the way I take a look at it. And here's the thing, when I am acquiring DOT, what I do is I dollar cost average. I am ignoring what happens to the price of DOT in the short to medium term. So when people comment and say, oh, ever since you made that video on Polkadot, the price of DOT went down 5%. It's like, yeah, who cares about that? I don't care about that because I am taking more of a long-term approach. Anytime I earn any sort of income, I set aside some for DOT. So it doesn't matter if that day the price of DOT is pumping or dumping, it doesn't matter, I'm just going to continue to accumulate over an extended period of time. And that's the beauty about dollar cost averaging. Through dollar cost averaging, quite essentially what I'm doing is I'm focused on spending more time in the market as opposed to timing the market. I'm essentially putting those horse binders on and I'm just focusing on the next bull run. A lot of people out there, they want instant results, they want fast results, that's what she said, and that's why they day trade they swing trade, they resort to things like using leverage. And a lot of friends that I know that do that, I can't speak on everyone's behalf, 
But again, right, just from my personal experience, a lot of people that I see that do that, they get absolutely wrecked more often than not. They're stressed out, they're anxious because I had a friend who ended up spiraling because he wanted to take up day trading, he wanted instant results, you know, started day trading, got liquidated a couple times, got stop loss, ended up going on a losing streak, and what happens? Extra stress and anxiety starts to creep in, he gets frustrated, and he ends up thinking that cryptos are a joke. But I think he just got the wrong view. He got the wrong viewpoint because if he's entering the crypto space thinking that he's going to get instant results, you know, day trading, swing trading, I think it was a recipe for a disaster to begin with. I didn't think it was going to work out that well. And that's why I think dollar cost averaging is so amazing, at least for me. It removes a lot of the extra stress and anxiety. And also on top of that, you know, if let's say I'm dollar cost averaging into DOT, and let's say the price of DOT dumps 10% next week. If let's say in the next month, the price of DOT goes back up 15%, then I've managed to recoup this loss, right? Because through dollar cost averaging, it's quite essentially just acquiring and just hodling and waiting for the next bull run. Quite essentially, that's the way I view it. So whereas if someone were to day trade DOT, right? If let's say they get liquidated, there's no coming back from that trade position. They have to make another trade position and hopefully recoup the losses that they gained previously. But through dollar cost averaging, you know, that's not necessary. Just holding, waiting for the price to go back up. So that's why I love dollar cost averaging so much. Protects me from a lot of potential risk. And I just like to keep things simple. And that's why dollar cost average. I wouldn't be surprised whatsoever if DOT during the next bull run did hypothetically at least go to the price of $100. And during the process, make all of those polka dot critics come running over to their girlfriend's boyfriend's grandma and start begging for that used bratwurst extender. If you know, you know. Gonna be a little bit embarrassing if you ask me, but hey, I'm extremely bullish on Dot. I think Polkadot has such a bright future ahead. I think that Dot is a sleeping giant. That's what she said. And if you want to check out a very interesting video, make sure to go ahead and click on this thumbnail right here. It's a very fantastic video, and I think you all would really love it. It's been Lee the Captain, and I'll catch you all on the next one. I'm out. Peace, boy.